Resuming debate, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to stand today to discuss Bill C-277, an act providing for the development of a framework on palliative care in Canada. With the introduction of this bill, the member for Sarnia Lambton has taken a significant step forward in our national dialogue on palliative and end-of-life care, and I want to thank the member for bringing this forward. I appreciate the opportunity to provide some reflections on this extremely important in in initiative. Palliative care is an issue that's gaining increasing attention across our country. This was further magnified by discussions on end-of-life care options that occurred earlier this year when medical assistance in dying became a legal action option. Views on this matter differ, but we can all agree that patients should have access to a full range of care options to treat pain and other symptoms at the end of, uh, end of their life. Palliative care is an approach to health care that focuses on the needs of patients who are living with life-threatening conditions, as well as their families. Research shows that it can have a significant impact on improving quality of life for patients while reducing the stress and burden on their families. As demographics in Canada shift, the need for end-of-life care is increasing, and Canadians have been loud and clear in calling for access to high quality for those who are approaching the end of their life. Mr. Speaker, before elected as a member of Parliament, I had a privilege to be an oncology nurse in St. Joseph Health Centre, and I have actively provided palliative care to many patients, and I've seen firsthand the impact that what good quality care good palliative quality care has on patients and their families during the end of their lives. While palliative care has been improving in Canada, we know that there is still so much work to be done. Some, some studies have shown and have reported that as few as 16 to 30 percent of Canadians who die have access to it, depending on where you live in the country. More recently, a study by the Ontario Health Quality Council found that 40 percent of Ontarians who died in 2014-2015 had not received a palliative care service. Access often depends on physician referrals, the availability of services, and the awareness of care options among patients and their families. The Ontario study found that most patients did not start receiving palliative care until the last month of their life. This is a concern because early access can be critical, if not the most important, for maintaining the best possible quality of life for a patient. The study also found that less than half of the patients who received palliative care received it at home. Most of us want to stay in our homes and communities for as long as possible. When asked, the majority of Canadians say that they would, ra they would rather prefer to spend their last days at home. In spite of this, close of two-thirds of deaths in this country are still happening in hospital. The Canadian Cancer Society issued a report this year called the Right to Care, Palliative Care for All Canadians. It highlighted a number of gaps and barriers to palliative care in Canada, such as lack of standards, limited data, insufficient training for providers, and inadequate support for care caregivers. This study, and others like it, show that now is the time to work together on addressing these gaps. As was said by many times during the debate on Bill C-14, improving palliative care is a priority for our government. In fact, the preamble of this act clearly signals our intent to support improvements to a range of end-of-life care services in Canada. Canadians need real options options that respect their plans and preferences for care in what is often a very difficult stage of life. It is obvious that Canadians are looking at their governments to make this happen. Stakeholders, including the Canadian Medical Association, the Canadian Hospice Palliative Care Association, the Quality End-of-Life Care Coalition of Canada, the Canadian Nurses Association, and the Canadian Cancer Society have all called for a national leadership in an area of palliative care, and we have been listening. Our government believes that Bill C-277 provides us with a timely opportunity to take a leadership role on this issue, and we support the creation of a framework for palliative care. 
I would like to recognize the efforts of the member for Sonia Lambton in putting forward such a thoughtful pr proposal for what this framework could look like. However, in considering this bill, I would urge each member to also consider the need to respect jurisdictional roles and responsibilities in this area. As we know, health is a shared responsibility in our country, with most of the responsibility of delivering care falling under the purview of the provinces and territories. Most provincial and territorial governments already have some form of palliative care strategy, plan or framework, or have policies or programs in place to support palliative care. Several provinces recently dedicated funding to improve palliative care services in their respective jurisdictions. The bill needs to be better aligned with the scope of federal roles and responsibilities in relation to palliative care, and we will be introducing amendments to that effect. The government is well positioned to complement, bolster, and spread the important work underway across the country by provincial and territorial governments, as well as stakeholders across the health sector. I believe the amendments could be made that would achieve this objective while respecting the spirit of this bill. As we all know, the government provides provincial and territorial governments with a long-term funding for health care. Our government made a platform commitment to provide $3 billion to provinces and territories to, del to deliver more and better home care services for Canadians, including those who need palliative care. This commitment is being pursued in the context of the Health Board. Negotiation with provinces and territories are ongoing, and I'm optimistic that in the future there may be synergies with the proposed framework. Mr. Speaker, the division of responsibilities for health between the, between the government and the provinces and territories presents us with both challenges and opportunities. If we move forward with implementing this bill, it will be important to talk to provincial and territorial governments and key stakeholders on the appropriate scope of the palliative care framework. It will also be important for us to learn from the significant body of work on palliative care that has been published in recent years. This includes reports from the parliament, provincial and territorial advisory bodies, and stakeholders such as the Canadian Medical Association. One key example is the Canadian Hospice Palliative Care Association 2015 report called The Way Forward, which seeks to integrate a palliative care approach to care throughout the healthcare system. Mr. Speaker, I would like to close by thanking you for giving me the opportunity to reflect on the importance of this bill and to offer some considerations as we move forward, reviewing it in a great, greater detail. I believe that a framework for palliative care is the right approach for Canada, and I look forward to further discussion on what that framework should look like so that we can all have better access to palliative care for all Canadians. And once again, I want to thank the member for bringing this extremely important piece of legislation to this House. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.